What's the word, y'all? Hey, man, I got to get a lot of love to the Golden State Warriors. Not because they won tonight's game, because I couldn't care less who ends up winning, but because they made it interesting. That's all a brother has been wanting. Look at the last couple videos on this channel. We've talked about nothing but blow it out, the blow it out, the blow out. And today, we got a game. And this felt like in the very first quarter, of course, you know, this is why you shouldn't over overreact to the first quarters. It felt like it might have been a blowout. And I was just this close to turning into the Joker. If we would have had four games in the conference finals and all four of them been a blowout, I would have been done with and i know it's not smart to have my mental health closely associated with this, the dribbling of this little orange basketball but it is and right now i'm happy because it was good i mean it was a single digit game ladies and gentlemen what a single digit game in 2022 that does not happen uh but it did i want to quickly remind you about my newsletter the enjoy basketball newsletter three times a week you get an email that is keeping you up with all things basketball so right now it seems like we have about 30,000 people signed up which is dope but i know we can't get more and it's free you get three times a week and you get the inside scoop when we drop this merch which is coming very very soon by the way but the newsletter people will definitely know first i need you to go and hit that link in the description put your email in and you're gonna get those updates but there is a small bug um sometimes you can subscribe to the newsletter and you won't get it in your direct gmail but you can just pull it over it should be something on screen showing you how to do it subscribe to the enjoy basketball newsletter we're trying to keep that up and get those numbers higher so go ahead all right where do we start with today's game man because i think we got a little bit of every thing right early in this game the Dallas Mavericks were the best shooting team in franchise history when it came to the first half they hit 15 threes and I, I think they said on the broadcast that was a franchise record and they went into halftime with like a 14 or so point lead they had to be on cloud nine Luca was like not questionable because we all knew he's gonna play but he's playing through sickness and in the first half he had 24 points on seven for 12 which is in insane they was comparing it to Jordan's flu game like half-heartedly you know they weren't saying this is exact same but half hard and they would say, hey, this might be Lucas flu game. Ha, 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 Jalen Brunson, after game one where he was somewhat stinky, had you gave you 20 points in the first half. He had four threes. Reggie Bullock hit four threes. Dorothy Smith hit three threes. And they were really doing their thing. Even Davis Bertans off the bench gave you some quality minutes in the first half. But this is the thing about the Golden State Warriors. If you completely forget about that one game against the Memphis Grizzlies, they're going to fight. And in the third quarter, they did exactly that. And, well, you saw, like, the biggest hole in the Dallas Mavericks game. I guess the two biggest holes in the Dallas Dallas Mavericks game because in this game they shot 46 percent from three on 45 made or 45 attempts insane they put up 117 points muy good muy bien going against the Golden State Warriors right but boy oh boy in that third quarter when I tell you Kevon Looney turned into Hakeem Elijah one or he turned into um Kareem Abdul Jabbar a combination of the two because there was no rim protection no rim resistance whatsoever anytime somebody got one foot ahead of their defender it was a dip off to Kevon Looney and he was dunking or laying it up it was even a play where Maxi Kleber tried to wrap him up to foul him and it was the softest wrapped up foul of all time and ended up being an and one Kevon Looney and, and the thing that I took away from the third quarter more than anything and I even kind of talked about this on the broadcast I, I know some people really dislike Reggie Miller I think Reggie Miller's all right on the broadcast maybe that's a hot take but I think Reggie Miller's all right in this broadcast um and early in this third quarter once the Golden State Warriors start to go on that little run the Dallas Mavericks offense kind of halted away from some of the things that were successful in the first half and then they were trying to to hunt Stephen Curry they said on the broadcast of the first nine possessions of the third quarter seven of them they were trying to get Steph Curry in a pick and roll to have him as the primary defender on Luka Doncic and guess what out of the seven I think only one of them they successfully got Steph Curry on the switch the defense from the Golden State Warriors prevented the head hunting completely and I want to give a lot of credit to the overall defense but that's also credit to Steph Curry you like Kenny how's that credit to Steph Curry if the Dallas Mavericks game plan is to go with Steph Curry. Not allowing the opposing team to hunt you is a skill. That real life is a skill. Like, Steph Curry has become a solid defender, you know, but he doesn't match up against Luka because Luka's one of the greatest in the game and he's also like a 6'7 power forward, basically, and a guard's body. Um, I would not go as far to say he's a better defender than DeJounte Murray. I, I saw... I saw that on the timeline this morning, which is wi as wild as it gets. But Steph Curry not allowing, and them, the team not allowing them to get the switch that they want, prevented the Dallas Mavericks from getting any offense whatsoever in that third quarter. I mean, in the third quarter, Luka only attempted five shots. You know, Luka was playing kind of passive in this one. Like I said, the bro was sick. He might have been completely gassed after giving them 24 points in the first half. He probably like, man, somebody else picked me up. And and no nobody else did. But back to the thing, back to the thing. I don't know the exact numbers because NBA.com doesn't have it in front of me. 
but the points in the paint for the Golden State Warriors had to be, of their 126 points, points in the paint had to be like 60 of them things, bro. They were getting to the paint at will and just doing everything they wanted, and that is one of the biggest holes in the Dallas Mavericks game. This is something that the um, the Phoenix Suns struggled with taking advantage of with DeAndre Aiden or even the guards. This is something that Rudy Gobert, we know he cannot do or has not done in his career so far, is take advantage of a lackluster front line. But in this one, with Steve Kerr as the coach and, and Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green. But we're going to talk about Draymond Green because bro's ass today. Draymond Green, Kevon Looney, and Jordan Poole. They're going to go at the basket even though historically they have been a jump shooting team. They're going to go at the basket because there's nothing even there. You've been able to get by with Maxi Kleba at the five because he, he has been such a great shooter. And three is greater than two. But in a game like this, where you have a smart offense and they know that getting to the basket is easy, layup after layup after layup, they took advantage of it. And I'm hoping that no matter if the Dallas Mavs come back and win the series, because if you do not remember, they were in the same predicament last series, they ended up winning the, the series completely. Um, whether they win this series or lose this series, getting an adequate rim protecting big has to be number one thing on their priority list. I don't care if Zach Levine is interested. Go out and get a big, because Zach Levine should stay in Chicago, but go out and get a big that you can trust because um, Dwight Powell basically tips off the basketball at the start of the game and he don't see the floor anymore and the idea of Maxi Kleeb and Dorian Finney-Smith as their bigs have, have worked to an extent but I don't think it can sustain you enough to win a championship, which at the end of the day is the overall goal. We also do have to remember that this is like year number three. You're number three? You're number four? Of them building around Luka. You know, still very early in his career. Bro ain't even making his max contract money just yet, if I'm not mistaken. I think it starts next season. So they're still very early on in building the team around him. But I think it would just improve his game. Um, to have a live threat, first of all, but also to have somebody that they can rely on on that back end front line or whatever you want to call it that can prevent Kevon Looney from being the Western Conference Finals MVP. Because if you if you gave me one vote, and I got to give a lot of love to Steph Curry, we're going to do that in a second. If you gave me one vote, vote, <laughs> and I, I can tell you who the Western Conference MVP has been so far, I'm giving that to Kevon Looney, and I'm not thinking twice about it. It's going to be Iggy 2.0 for Steph Curry, because I'm giving it to Kevon Looney, because they they tried to go at him once they figured out that oh man they not allowing Steph Curry to get that switch we're gonna try to get Kevon Looney again I mean we did it last game and it was somewhat kind of successful let's do it again and then this one they were trying to hide Kevon Looney they were confident the Warriors were confident in having Kevon Looney guard whoever it was whether it be Jalen Brunson or Luka Doncic and yes they got him a few times but they were okay with that and he was great so you got him switching on to Luka and holding his own him switching on to Jalen Brunson holding his own and it also dropping 21 and 12 with five offensive rebounds again come on man that's my Western Conference player of Western Conference Finals MVP. Is that how the hell you say it? The Magic Johnson Western Conference Finals MVP? Whatever it is, he is he's got my vote through the first two games. But Steph Curry, listen, Steph Curry was great in this one as well because in the first half, like I said, they were getting kind of steamrolled, but it wasn't due to Steph Curry because in the first half, Steph Curry had 20 points. He had it five threes. He was the only thing that made it relatively close. And in the second half, he finally got some help outside of Wiggins. I mean, Jordan Poole came in and dropped 16 points in the second half. Um, Like I mentioned, Kevon Looney turned in to the greatest player of all time. Uh, Clay Thompson scored some baskets. Otto Porter was huge in the second half. Uh, and one, he got a couple, he got a, um, a steal that was very clutch. And I, I think he got hit in his face. And I don't know if he came back after that, or maybe he did. And I just don't, don't realize it. Either way, in the second half, they look like the team that was there in the entire first game. But in the first half, they did not have that. Oh, the Dallas Mavericks got to scrap the non-shooter minutes. They got to scrap them. They got to scrap them. I know it wasn't a ton of them today, but they got to scrap them because the Golden State Warriors were legitimately let. Um, who who was it? They were completely let uh, Frank Nielakin to take every shot he wants to. He played three minutes. He was a minus 10, got yanked. And they was like, you know what? Let's throw Josh Green in there. And they let Josh Green shoot a shot as well. You, I, I, you got to get rid of those, those possessions or those minutes. Um, because I, I know you want to put him there for their defense, and Franklin Lakeen is a positive defensive player. He always has been. If the Warriors can now focus more on Luka or focus more on somebody else because they don't trust Franklin Lakeen or they don't trust Josh Green, they're just making the, the game a lot easier for them. So you got to figure out how to defend their offense with the capable players that you have on your roster because Frankie Smokes ain't really do he, he can't do it. Oh, the Warriors look terrible in the first half. We kind of talk about that. And they were doing the thing that frustrated the hell out of me back in the day when Derrick Rose was on my 
my team, and I love Derrick Rose, don't get me wrong, but he had one major flaw in his game, and that was that bro always left his feet to throw a pass. And because of that, if you leave your feet, this is something my freshman year, freshman year B coach, uh, Coach Lavic taught us, if you leave your feet to throw a pass, there's nowhere to go. You cannot change your mind. And that was a lot of the turnovers from the Golden State Warriors in that first half. Uh, they figured it out in the second one, but I just I was just watching it like, damn, they go a Derrick Rose turnover. That's what I call There's a Derrick Rose turnover. Uh, but in the second half, not that many of them. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you remember the timeline where people are like, the, the Warriors, they got they got a trade for um they got a trade for Miles Turner, or they got a trade for DeMontis Sabonis because they got like all the young guys in Kaminga and Moses Moody, who Steve Kerr played in the second game of a Western Conference final. Moses Moody out of nowhere was getting PT and was looking pretty good in it. But they have Moses Moody, Jonathan Kaminga, James Wiseman been sitting on ice for like th two seasons now. And everybody's like, hey, go, go get, go get Sabonis. Or go get Miles Turner because you're going to need some center play. It was Kevon Looney has been there the entire time. I don't think Kevon Looney's missed a game in, in this uh, season. Nope, not one game, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he is that. He is that. Kevon Looney, man. And you know what? I hope this is not just us gassing Kevon and then him getting exposed, if you want to call him that, um, later in the series or in the next series, whatever it may be. But he's been incredible in the minutes that they gave him. Because uh, there was a time where they were going ultra small. That was when Jonathan Kaminga was in the lineup when um when Gary Payton II got injured. And you kind of forgot that Kevon Looney existed in a lot of those times. But now that he's getting the PT that he deserves, it's insane. Draymond Green. Um, Draymond Green's foul trouble was one of the greatest things to happen to this team. Um, because as good as Draymond can be, we didn't get that today. Um, He is a guy that plays with a ton of emotion, as you know. Um, and that emotion was getting the better of him. This is this is me as an outsider looking into this game. That emotion was getting the best of him all over the place in this one. He was playing like a like a I don't, don't want to say no words, but he was playing very bad. So when he <laughs> when he went to the bench with his fifth foul or whatever it may be, him trying to get that steal on Luca on an inbounds pass when your team had all the momentum and now you got to sit on the bench. But hey, that opened up the game for Kevon Looney to come back in and dominate. So uh, Dre has to be better. Again, you win this game even with him not being great. But imagine if he was. You know what I'm saying? Imagine if he was. It has to be demoralizing for the Dallas Mavericks to, again, like I mentioned, shoot 46% from three, making 21 of those things and not playing a bad game of basketball. But because in like 75% of the second half, you got outscored, that was that was the game. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but again, they were in this position again la last series and they completely figured it out and they won that series. So I, anything is possible. But the Warriors look not unbeatable, obviously, but they look like they're going to be super hard to beat. And then when they were wrapping up this game, they said in the broadcast that the Warriors have not lost the home game yet this playoff run, which is crazy. I've been in a Chase Center. It was dope. It was a regular season game versus the Knicks, so it wasn't at full capacity. Playoff Chase Center is kind of nice. It's not the Oracle. It's not the Oracle, but it's pretty damn good, man. It's pretty good. We talked about this on our, we did like a live stream for Bleacher Report a little while ago. We were trying to, we were ranking the home crowds in the playoffs, and I think I put TD Guard at number one, and then the Chase Center number two. And I don't know if that's right or wrong. I guess we'll find out tomorrow because we have game one in Boston at the TD Garden. Uh, but those two are just so very close to me, but I think I put TD Garden number one. But you saw the Chase Center today rocking, rocking. That was even when, you know, they were down by, I don't know what the biggest lead ended up being. I think maybe 19, 20 points. It was still rocking. Um, I cannot imagine how expensive these tickets are. You know, like I said, we went to a random game against the Knicks in a game where somebody very important didn't even play. R.J. Barrett didn't even play in that game. I guess that's very important to the Knicks. Maybe not in the grand scheme of basketball, but to the Knicks, R.J. Barrett is very important. And they were hella expensive in that random regular season game. So I cannot imagine how expensive they are for the conference finals game too. Or if they make it to the finals, how expensive they would be. And I'm not checking because SeatGeek does not pay me on this channel. They pay me on my main channel, but not on this channel. Um, I think those are all my notes. Um, How do I see the rest of the series playing out? I, I, I went with Warriors before it started off. I still feel good about that pick uh, just because they look so very good. I do believe that Jason Kidd is going to make some adjustments. This is not about to be a sweep by any means. Am I, if this ends up being a sweep, I'd be disappointed. Not in Luka per se because he, he, gave you, he gave you 42 points. You know what I'm saying? But as a whole... For you know, for you to even get this far and then just get swept in the in the conference finals to the Warriors, it's very uh, Portland Trailblazer like. You know what I'm saying? Remember the Portland Trailblazers got to the conference finals, they went against the Warriors, and it was like, oh, that was that was a cool little run that we did, but we ran against the Warriors, and once you do that, it's is wraps.